Miss Carmichael, please. Dr. Peterson is ready for you. Awfully oh, sorry, I have to go. Had a perfect hand. Would have beaten the pants off you. Harry will take you, Miss Carmichael. Oh, thank you. Watch her carefully. Don't take your eyes off her. <laughs> say this was a big, big Cinderella story that could only happen in the time of the era of the studio system because I never studied to be an actress. I never asked for it, never looked for it, never been in a studio. I wanted to sing. I wanted to be another Deanna Durbin, I guess. And I studied singing from the time I was 14 to sing like my mother. I wanted to sing musical comedy and light opera. I mean, that was my dream. And I worked so hard with old maestro, an Italian maestro. And, and then Fate had another plan for me, I guess, because I was running to Beverly Hills High School one day, a little late, took my shoes off, and my long auburn hair was flying in the sunshine as I was running. And I suddenly I noticed a dark car was going around the block, and a man in it was looking at me. There's nobody else around, and it scared me. And then he went around another block as the next, I'd run faster. And Mother warned me about men like that, so I was scared. About the third block, this car stopped, and this man got out, and I'm frozen. And he came up to me and he said, well, young lady, have you ever thought of being in motion pictures? I said, no, sir, and I'm late for school and I've got to go. And he, might, he said, where do you live? And I told him I live with my mother and I told him and I ran off to school and I forgot all about it. It turned out that was his name was Henry Wilson. He was a very famous agent in that era, a man who discovered Rock Hudson and quite a few others, Tab Hunter and others. And a few years later, he became David O. Selznick's right-hand man. And he called and said, I'd like you to come and meet Mr. Selznick. I, of course, had never studied, never trained to be an actress, wanted to sing only, and I had no idea who Mr. Selznick was. I, I saw very few movies. I was, you know, working in school a lot and, and had a lot of friends and so forth. So I go to the studio, I meet Mr. Selznick, who's a huge man. I mean, he looked bigger than life to me. It was a little bit, I don't know, he just overpowered, you know, he, I just a little bit nervous meeting him. And he kind of walked up to me and he towered over me and asked me some questions and I answered them and I held my own. And about a week later, they asked me to come in and do what they called a cold reading. I didn't know what a cold reading was, but I did it. Then Mr. Selznick said to Henry Wilson, who was there, he said, um, I think we'll screen test her. And again, I, I, I'm so naive, I, you know, whatever. So then Henry said, come on, I'm take you to the commissary. So he takes me to the commissary. Now I'm, I'm hungry at that point. I'm always hungry. So we get to the commissary. I'm starting to eat my lunch. In the door comes a number of men from Mr. Selznick's office. And they sat just a little bit over there. And they kept staring and looking at me. And I'm trying to eat, and I'm so nervous. I said to Henry, what are they looking at? He said, just keep eating. So pretty soon the men get up to leave the restaurant. One man came over and whispered in Henry's ear and he said, never mind the screen test, just sign her. Now, if that isn't a Cinderella story, yes, it could only happen in those days. I went home about two weeks later or whatever. Henry called and said, well, Rhonda, you have your first screen part. You've got your first role. Oh, what is it? Well, um, you're going to be in a film called Spellbound, starring Ingrid Bergman and Gregory Peck. Oh, what's the part? Well, <clears throat> you're going to play the role of a nymphomaniac patient in a mental institution. I said, what? I didn't know what a nymphomaniac was. I had no clue. My mother, she never knew the word. So we went and looked up in the dictionary, and that's the only way that I that I knew what a nymphomaniac was, and all I knew, Mother said, well, at least I know it isn't typecasting, you know. <laughs> Hitchcock was so sweet to me because I was so untrained. He loved the fact that I never had training as an actress. He didn't have to untrain me. So he took my arm, and he took me on the set one day, and he took me aside off, said some nice things to me to just make me comfortable. He said, remember that when you read those lines, I was there in the office, and he said, just, you did beautifully, just, you'll just do great. So just whatever he said, I felt very comfortable with him. He introduced me to Ingrid Bergman. Now, Ingrid Bergman comes to me, she's very tall, and I'm tall then. And Ingrid looks at me and she goes, oh, 
Oh, at last, eyeball to eyeball, because Ingrid never could look anybody eyeball to eyeball. Of course, Gregory Peck was tall, so it was great. So she was delighted meeting me, and I was 5'8", and she was 5'9", or something, I don't know. But she was very sweet to me. I always appreciate her, and so was Hitchcock to me, gracious. The only thing, he never told me how to say my lines. They were lines way beyond my, my years, and I inherited some innate God-given gift that gave me the ability to say this, the, the incredible lines that were written for me that, that, for that film. And somehow, uh, Selznick loved the fact they were just coming out of me correctly and spinning them out and meaning them. You're right. I've been lying like mad. I hate men. I loathe them. When one of them so much as touches me, I want to sink my teeth into his hand and bite it off. <laughs> In fact, I did that once. Do you care to hear about it? The only thing Selznick helped me with was he said, instead of walking in the door normally into the doctor's office, try just slithering around the door jam and sliding down on the chair arm and just staring at her. You know what? It just set the pace for me to say the lines I, I had after that. It just did it. Psychoanalysis. It blows the pants off me. Lying on the couch like some dreary nitwit telling all. You don't really expect to get anywhere listening to me babble about my idiotic childhood. Really. I look back and, and I realize that how fortunate I was to start like that. Because Selznick, with the great that? films he made, um, he, he gave me that role. I was under contract. He gave me a seven-year contract right away. Then he sent me over to RKO. Uh, he gave me a loan out to, to for a spiral staircase, an incredible, incredible cast, top, top cast. And then I did Out of the Past, which is the number one top noir film out there today, I think. I mean, <laughs> it was incredible. That's all part of the Cinderella story because I didn't ask for anything except I guess God blessed me with it. After the film was over, Ingrid went to entertain the troops in Germany and she knew my young husband was there. And she was in, standing at the stage and she said, if there's private first class Thomas Lane in the audience, I want him to come backstage. And he was in the audience. And he wrote me about it and said what a thrill it was to meet her. She was so gracious. Then when she got home, she called me on the phone, no secretaries, it was just Ingrid's voice. I didn't even know who it was when it first called me. She said, it's Ingrid. Ingrid, and she said, I saw your young husband. He's fine, and he's in Germany, and I told him how wonderful you were. If that isn't gracious, you know, I admired her more than any anyone I've ever worked with. I realize I'm looking back to make the films I did, to meet the people, I mainly the people I worked with were just, it was thrilling for me. And then to, to uh, be the, take the name value that I had to, that I could turn it for good, that I could, uh, in honor of my sister Beverly, who was dying of, of ovarian cancer through the years, I said to my husband, would you help me start a place for women and their families going through cancer to come and be helped with, and give them hope? And that's what we did. We started a wonderful clinic there for women with, with, with cancer and clinical psychologists helping them go through the terrible trauma in their families of dealing with cancer. I, I have, uh, there's a compassion in me for children and for people, and so I've got such a passion for it. I started a path in Hollywood as people assisting the homeless, and it gets women and children off of the street, off of bad relationships, and puts them in a safe place to be trained, learn business. By the time they leave, after, after three to six months, they have a an apartment, a place to go, a job, and some money in their pocket, and their children have schooling. We had free medical care, not just a hand out, but a hand up, to get them back into life again. So that's where my heart is, and life is very exciting for me now, and uh, I'm just very grateful. Mm -hmm.